Hello lovelies, Natalie, the old school otaku here, and um, I hope that I can call you lovelies. It's actually something that I picked up on um, my personal Twitter, um, actually calling my mutuals and whatnot lovelies, and it's a, uh, it's a name that I actually enjoy to use. So um, please do let me know in the comment section below if that's something that you are agreeable to or something that you would prefer not. I do realize that there is another popular YouTuber set that um, uses that term for their fans, but um, that's really not why I use that term. Um, it's just something I picked up and I enjoy it. So hopefully y'all are into that as well. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's now time for... Um, my bottom surgery vlog part two so let's uh let's kind of get into that um it is now sunday i had my surgery on thursday so um surgery was on thursday the 8th and is now sunday the 11th um i had my first discussion of everything post-operative um yesterday and so let's kind of get into more of well the actual post-operative stuff i think i talked about pelvic floor therapy um, and a lot of the other um, doctor's visits and things that uh, led up to the actual um, surgery itself. But um, let's, let's talk about what it's like um, being, you know, here in the hospital um, and what everything has basically felt like. Um, obviously, I can't get too graphic with things because YouTube, um, but uh, we will see what I can do. Um, anyway... Um, the day of was a very interesting experience. Um, after all, uh, my actual surgical time was at 7.45 a.m. And uh, I was, uh, the OR was booked for, uh, I think about seven hours total. I believe my overall surgery took about, I think I was, I think the surgery took about five hours and then took a couple more hours for me to recover. Um, and then finally get brought up here into my private room um, here at the uh, Henry Ford Hospital in downtown Detroit. And uh, yeah, so we um, the arrival time was 5, 5.45 a.m. Um, Thursday morning, and that was definitely a fun time. There's obviously, here in Michigan, we have uh, only two seasons. We have uh, winter and construction. So we are deep into construction season right now. Um, and unfortunately, the expressways and whatnot that make it easier to get here to the hospital have been closed down and have construction on it. So it's been um, a bit of a pain. And of course, you know, that time in the morning, you know, 530 ish in the morning on a on a Thursday morning is, uh, well, it's a it's a mild part of rush hour, but it is really starting to get into rush hour hours at that time. Um, Thankfully, uh, my partners have told me that it's been a lot easier for them to get in here over the weekend um, than it has uh, than it was the first couple of days. So that's definitely nice that um, they're able to get through all of that. And yeah, so um, my team has been great. Um, I have seen um, um, every day since I have actually seen both um, both of the surgical teams, the uh, plastic surgery team as well as the urology team. The urology team are technically in charge of everything. Um, I'm not necessarily the plastic surgery team. And I think that's really a great way to go about it actually because most of the real work that happens is related to urology um, and whatnot. You know, the you know, the way they change the urethra and all of that. So they move that around as well as, you know, building the vaginal canal and all of that is actually handled by the um, urologist and not necessarily the plastic surgeon. The plastic surgeon is more concerned with making my vagina look natural and pretty. Um, so that's kind of where all of that is sitting at. So, um, and she, she is beautiful. Um, I did get a chance to see her uh, on Thursday after I had recovered and everything. Um, the surgical team came in. I talked to my surgeon, uh, Dr. Shakir, and he actually showed me a couple of pictures um, that they had taken um, there in the OR. Obviously, um, she's very angry. She's swollen, um, not looking her best right now. And, 
it'll be a little while before she starts looking her best. And I understand that. And it's something you should know going into all of this, if you are looking into getting this surgery, is that um, it's not going to look good right away. Um, it'll take some time, the healing process and inflammation, and all of that to go down so that um, you can actually see the final result. And um, there is always the potential and need for revisions in order to make things look nicer. Maybe you don't like the way it um, overall came out at first and might need a revision. Um, the doctors at U of M um, had basically said that it's like at least an 80% revision rate, supposedly, at least according to them over there. Um, I've not actually heard a similar uh, revision rate here at the Henry Ford. Um, they seem to be very confident with the way it all turns out at the end um, that um, I won't necessarily need a revision unless there's some major complication. So far, we have not had any complications, and that's great because um, complications kind of suck. I, there, there's always the potential for complications, always the potential for something um, to really go wrong through all of this. And um, I know plenty of girls that have had some pretty major complications. And um, I'm happy to know that um, at the very least, my choice of doctor for all of this seems to um, have a much better track record when it comes to that. So uh, that's definitely, definitely nice. Um, but yeah, so I've been in the hospital here for a few days, and one of the things that I can definitely say is that um, I have a very specific dietary concern um, that a lot of people don't. Uh, there's quite a bit of food that I do not eat. I am neurodivergent, um, and <laughs> from all of that, I've never been very good at um, eating normal meals. Um, it's a, I have a big issue with texture, tons of issues regarding texture of food. Um, and because of that, there's a lot of food I don't eat, um, a lot of food that my body, because I've not eaten for so long, doesn't know how to process and handle. So, um, like, I mean, I love the smell of beef, but I personally cannot eat beef because if I do, it's bad. My, my digestive tract just does not know how to handle beef, and it's kind of similar for a lot of fruits and vegetables and things. Um, so I have a very limited diet of what I can eat. Um, that is one, tasty, and two, able to get down my throat without me puking it back up. And that would not be good um, to have that happen. So um, thankfully, uh, the staff here um, does have a number. You can actually call down to the dietary office and um, you can request substitutions with um, the meals. They do have a set um, set of meals that the chef here prepares. It's different than some of the other hospitals I've been in. like. Um, I've been over in Beaumont in this area, and Beaumont actually has this full menu that they hand to you that gives you a bunch of different options, and you can order exactly what you want, and of course, they'll make substitutions based off of whatever your dietary concerns are. So if you're on a diabetic diet, they won't give you um, full Pepsi. They'll give you Diet Pepsi instead. Um, they'll limit the, num uh, the amount of carb intake that you have, things like that, and they're still doing that here. It's just they kind of have a set menu. And so if you don't call them, they bring you whatever the default menu is. And so you really got to make sure you call the number, request the substitutions um, so that you can actually get the food. And of course, if um, there's any issues reaching out to them, make sure to talk to your nurse. Um, and they should be able to help you with that too. Just like, the, you know, should be contacting the nurse regularly to make sure you're getting your pain is being dealt with and any issues and concerns. I drink a lot of water. And so this is actually my uh, third glass so far this morning. And uh, yeah, so I, I try not to um, work overwork the, uh, the nurse staff, but um, you know, I, I can't get up and move around as much as I normally would. Otherwise, I would just get up and get my own water uh, frequently, but um, they can definitely do that. And I'm, I'm happy that they're able to. Uh, so yeah, I mean, food is kind of a big thing. And that's something I've heard from a lot of the girls that have gone through this here at, um, at the Henry Ford is that food is an issue. Food is not very great here. Um, so I'm also very happy that my partners are able to smuggle in different foods. I think um, one of my partners is planning on bringing me chicken nuggets today. So I'll be looking forward to that. And of course, they gave me um, some candy that I can snack on. So I've got some Reese's here and uh, 
Reese's Pieces to snack on and uh, Lifesavers dummies. So I've got that. And, you know, they brought me a big care package with, uh, um, with some flowers that are lovely flowers. I love the flowers so much. Um, coloring books and other things. And I've got my Switch. I've been watching TV. Um, I kind of watch HGTV as a nice little uh, um, filler music and sound and whatnot so that's always nice to have on and been playing a lot of tetris and other things and trying to just keep my spirits up and running I mean, right now i'm kind of alone at the moment but my partner should be showing up to visit and other friends should be showing up to visit so hopefully you have a um, support system that'll be able to come and help you out too because this would be so very difficult if i didn't have that um <laughs> so i'm very appreciative of uh the of my family um, being around to, uh, to help out with all of that. And when I say family, I mean my found family, not necessarily my blood relatives. Um, most of them are remote, uh, out of the way and they could, they could come, but probably won't because this isn't life threatening so much anymore. Um, you know, any surgery could potentially be life threatening, but this one, um, is currently not as it currently stands. Everything's, everything's looking good. Um, they're, not a lot of issues, and thankfully my pain is being managed. Um, that is something else that I should uh, probably talk about is, you know, the pain management. I had a lot of issues with pain yesterday. They wanted to get me up and moving around. Um, on Friday, I was able to get up and sit down in a chair for a while. Um, and then yesterday, I actually spent most of my day actually sitting in the chair. I'm still in the bed right now, but um, at some point I'll probably move into the chair and they'll want to get me up and walking. I was able to do that a little bit last night um, with my partner in the room. Uh, she kind of watched me to make sure I wasn't falling or being slippy or dizzy or whatnot, and I wasn't. Um, once we finally got my pain situation under control, I was able to get up and move around. Um, they had switched my pain medications out. They take me, took me off the IV meds and everything and switched me on to pills and other stuff. And it wasn't quite um, getting where it needed to. Um, you know, you, you don't necessarily want to go for a zero as far as the pain scale goes, but um, you know, my aim as far as my pain floor usually is three because um, that's usually my normal operating amount because I do have a bit of pain that I live with um, every day. So uh, that's that's fine. But, um, you know, yesterday I was getting up to a seven sitting down, not doing anything. Um, and with it as acute as it was, I definitely could not get up and move around. So it was definitely nice once we kind of got things dialed into the point where um, it was working. I was able to get up, move around, um, and that was nice. I enjoyed getting up and moving around. I, I am not a fan of being stuck in bed. I'm not a fan of being stuck in my chair as much as I like sitting down, playing video games, and watching TV. I like the ability to be able to get up and do things myself. Um, I very independent woman um, and uh, you know not being able to uh, fend for myself is um, always a major adjustment um, thankfully you know the staff are very accommodating and whatnot so I've had no real problems with that it's just those are definitely out there um, one thing you should definitely know is that um, if you do have any issues with your hospital staff, make sure to make note of their names, maybe a brief description of them, um, so that you can actually put in complaints regarding them because they should be making your stay comfortable. Um, they should not be making your stay feel hostile in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's not supposed to be a hostile environment. You're not really gonna heal if you don't feel comfortable. Um, so that's just something to, uh, to make note of. Um, I, there was a, uh, one nurse the first couple of nights that was in the evening that I saw, right, um, seldomly, but every once in a while I would see, uh, them and, um, uh, they would misgender me and, um, always misgender me. So I made note of that, um, of that individual so I could put in a complaint because, you know, they, they should know, um. That that's not right so i wanted to make sure that that um, that got in there and i actually have not seen that um that staff member since um, i'm pretty sure they're still working they just got transferred somewhere else or not working in this general area or not working with me um, and that is 
fully within your right to do. Um, so definitely make sure that you, um, you know, if you are moving forward with this process, that you do um, know that you have the right to um, make complaints about um, your staff. You know, if they're not treating you right, um, if they're not gendering you correctly, things like that, make sure that um, you advocate for yourself. Uh, unfortunately, we have to do that. Um, but um, other than that one individual, um, I've not really had any issues here. So that is uh, just something to make note of. I mean, it, there's always potential for bad apples um, everywhere you go. So that just, just know that that's a, that's a thing. Um, but other than that, you know, the staff here has been wonderful. I'm well taken care of, and um, it's been it's been about as fun as it can be. Um, obviously, being in the hospital is not very fun. I would have much more fun being at home in my comfortable chairs and everything. But at least here, I'm getting the proper care that I need so I can heal, and um, everything will be nice when it's finally time for me to go home. Um, so far, I have not received any real questions um, regarding things, so um, I've got no questions to answer at the moment, but uh, please, please do. If you have any questions, any concerns, anything you want to specifically know, let me know down in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to answer those questions for you, um, provided they're not too graphic to answer on YouTube. Um, I'm, a, I'm a relatively open book. Um, I want to uh, do my best to assuage any fears that anyone would have regarding getting this surgery um, and answer any questions that you may have so that you can be the most informed that you can be um, going into things. It's, um, there was not a lot of, um, lot, a lot of people out, um, out there who had gone through the same surgery I had. I mean, there's quite a few people that have gone through vaginoplasty surgery, um, quite a few uh, trans women that I know that have done so, and I've been able to reach out and talk to them, get um, figure out how long it took them to, uh, to heal, how long that they were out of commission for being able to lift things, how long they were out for um, being able to do uh, sexual intercourse and other things like that. So um, I am a relatively sexual being like most of us are. Um, well. A good portion of us are, um, and uh, that's um, you know that's well perfect and fine for me to be. Um, so it's definitely a concern that I had is knowing how long I'd have to uh, be without. Um, so it was nice getting that information. So I hope to try and be a resource for all of you as well um, going into the future. Um, there are other girls out there that are going through similar things with uh, this specific program that I'm in. Um, and so it's nice to actually talk to some of them um, as well. And so um, if you are considering um, this, uh, you know, I'm a great resource. Feel free to reach out to me directly if um, your question is something that um, you don't feel uh, comfortable asking out in public. Feel free to, uh, you know, slide into my DMs and, uh, and let me know on Twitter and whatnot. It's a great place to, um, to reach out to me and uh, we, can, uh, we can talk more. Um, about the process. Um, and I'm more than happy to try and answer any questions that anyone has. Um, but yeah, I can't think of much else to talk about right now um, as far as everything's concerned. Uh, things are moving pretty nicely for me. I um, um, Hopefully I'll be getting up and moving around a bit more today, especially once I get some food in me. Um, I ended up skipping breakfast. Breakfast didn't sit well with me uh, this morning and I traditionally do not eat breakfast much. Um, I'm an intermittent faster. I uh, eat effectively two meals per day, usually between the hours of noon and 8 p.m. So that's usually when I eat, and outside of those hours, I typically don't eat. Um, maybe not the best uh, course of action to be in the hospital, but I'm used to it. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I hope to get up and move around. Can't wait to uh, see my partners when they come in for visiting hours. And um, yeah. I plan to keep going and kind of give y'all a heads up um, effectively every day while I'm here in the hospital and maybe a little bit more once I'm home and starting to do a lot of the recovery stages. So um, please, if, if there's anything you can think of that you want to know, please do let me know in the comments below. And um, I look forward to uh, chatting with y'all again, um, well, hopefully tomorrow. And I'll see you then. This is Natalie, the old school otaku. 
fresh from my bottom surgery. Signing off.